hello everybody okay um it's been a really really long time since me or anyone else has posted anything on this channel any videos or anything um but i talked to a few of the channel members and a lot of people still want to make videos um and i really want to make videos i have a bunch more topics that i want to talk about you know we could do so much with this channel i feel like so hopefully it was just a short I guess month long. It's been like a month since anyone's posted anything. A short hiatus, not an eternal death of the channel. <laughs> Anyways, um, so basically, as I said, um, last time I said I was going to dye my hair blue. Um, in this camera, because it's a webcam and it's really low quality, it actually looks terrible in this camera. It looks like this greenish gray. But I assure you, it doesn't look anything like that in real life. It looks more like almost like a teal or like a turquoise or like bluish green almost. Um, and it actually looks really nice, but it wasn't fully what I was going for. And I didn't have enough dye and um, it's fading and parts of it are uneven. And I have extensions that I'm, or I'm going to get extensions that I really want to dye to and have them all match my same hair color so I'm gonna re-dye it a darker type blue hopefully that will come out better um so yeah this is not it doesn't look this grayish greenish in real life um anyways so yeah the topic this week is going to be visibility uh, and as it relates to being genderqueer or gender variant or androgynous whatever the heck you call yourself or think yourself as um, and that goes for visibility in the media visibility in just your daily life like is it visible that you are a trans or gender queer person you know and how does that affect you um, is visibility in the workplace and schools and like I said, the media, movies, television, the representations of gender queer and gender variant people in society and in the media. And it's interesting because those are two somewhat, I guess, separate topics, but yet they're very similar representations of gender queer people and visibility of gender queer people. They're two somewhat different, but they're very similar. So I think we should just do it all in one topic <laughs> um, but speaking about visibility just a quick note um, to those of you who know of the very popular YouTube collaboration channel Androgenetics um, as some of you might know just last week I think they announced that they are no longer going to be making videos and it was the last week and it was just really really sad and I'm really disappointed because I mean being a male bodied gender non-conforming type of person it's very difficult in this society to get support to get inspiration to see other people like you in a positive light to to feel like you belong you know and even just to get to see other people living a good life being themselves you know that's really inspiring and that channel was pretty much the channel for I, I guess male bodied um, androgynous type people you know and it's just really sad to me because it was a big inspiration on me and a big motivator and um so yeah, if you haven't heard of Androgenetics, I say go watch some of the videos because they still have all of them up and they said they'll keep them up. But yeah, I think that was a great uh, channel for visibility when it comes to gender nonconforming um, male body people because I feel like in this society there's this big kind of, um, there's this almost like tomboys are okay and girls who wear pants are okay but guys who wear skirts are ah you know terrible freak um evil you know um t 
tom girls there's not even like a concept it's like the word doesn't even exist you know so um there's a big double standard definitely so i feel like that channel really kind of was a big time inspiration and helps give a lot of positive visibility and i'm really sad that it's closing but anyways back to the main topic and my perspective on genderqueer visibility as a whole um i have two words to say about media's representation and society's general visibility for genderqueer people and it's literally two words it sucks it really does suck there's very little very little to even talk about but um Feel like we should talk about the representations that do exist within the past couple of years there have been some people some semi-famous people who have come out as genderqueer or something similar and there have been several articles in different uh, newspapers and in different magazines and documentaries and stuff and there has been some interesting representations and um, there was a, I think, a campaign in New York. Um, I forget what it was even about, but they had a gender neutral person. It was a big deal because they had a bunch of other transgender people in it, but usually non binary people are usually excluded from most trans things. And so it was a really big deal to have such a, to have that become so mainstream. And I forget what, I don't, I don't even remember what the, um, campaign I'm talking about was but anyways yeah I've been seeing a lot of articles and stuff and what I mean by genderqueer representation in the media and genderqueer visibility in society sucks is I mean that 99.9% .9 of people probably don't know a clue about genderqueer people you know I mean trans representations are bad enough and sparse and scarce enough already. Gay representations are a lot better, but even still, it's not as. It's still like. Oftentimes, they're just token characters. They're not made to be real people, you know? And when it comes to genderqueer type people, you know, it's. It's like. You're lucky if you even hear that word. Like. You know, you're lucky if you hear the word gender and queer within two paragraphs of each other separated. You know, that's how bad it is sometimes. <laughs> and I think that it really needs to improve on the representation because really, and, and that's one thing I'm going to say, the main area where I think gender queer visibility is really, really good is on the internet. And <laughs> that's... It's not too impressive because the internet is not the nicest place. But um <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, I I'd say that when it comes to um where the most visibility, the most references, the most resources, the most communities for gender queer people, it would definitely be places like Tumblr or places like Facebook groups, you know, and a few forums I can think of, websites like Gender Fork, you know, stuff like that. Um, the internet is really, really good for it, and I feel it's kind of almost like we live in this kind of hierarchical society where what goes through the media, you know, things that challenge that, whether that be feminist things, whether that be LGBT really positive type things you know they're oftentimes censored out kind of by the media or they're toned down toned down to be really I guess um, mild to where people can take it more and I feel like on the internet it's complete freedom of speech complete freedom of expression so people are more likely to be able to just say what they want to say be themselves talk about what they want to talk about and really show the truth of what humans are really like and that's a broad range of different sexualities and sexes and genders not just male and female not just 
straight and gay, not just those concepts. It's a lot more complicated. And I feel like out of everywhere, visibility is the best on the internet. And I would say, though, on a more personal note, and yes, I know this video is insanely long, it's insanely scattered, it's very all over the place, but no, I don't care. <laughs> Um, on a personal note, though, I feel like um, being visible as a gender non-conforming person um, is kind of a bit of a burden. It's, I'm sorry, my hair is just driving me crazy. Um, you know, there's a lot of people stare at you, a lot of people act awkward and give you weird looks, you know, people ask you if you're a boy or a girl, you know, being visibly queer in any way, whether that be being visibly gay, visibly trans, you know, visibly gender queer, is very difficult in this society, and that's, on the one hand, you, you really want to be visibly queer, and you think it's really good because it shows everybody that you exist and that you're real and what you're about. But on the other hand, it's very difficult because people just are very ignorant about things. And yeah, they, they, it's just how it is. And that's pretty much, I think, the main thing that needs to be addressed is there needs to be more visibility, not just on the internet. You know, there needs to be more representations, not just quick little newspaper or magazine articles or blog entries or whatever. You know, there has to be more, um, there has to be movies and books written by genderqueer people about genderqueer people and their lives. You know, it has to become like, people have to know about it. And until that happens, I don't think anything's going to change because unfortunately we have a world where a lot of people are ignorant and they don't want to learn. They don't want to be educated. They don't want to take the five minutes to Google a word they don't understand. They don't want to spend two seconds on Wikipedia. They just want to go harass and someone else and ask people a bajillion questions if they don't understand something. So unless you really educate people through television and educate people through movies, they're not going to get educated and so yeah anyways I know this video is like a jillion minutes long but I hope that what I said made some sense and wasn't as scattered as it probably seems you know but anyways yeah so topic of the week gender queer visibility and representations in society the media and just your everyday life so thanks um subscribe and hopefully we'll get a lot more videos so yeah bye